Navigating to a remembered location, such as where you work, is something that we do every day. In order to do this successfully, though, our brains have to constantly compute several different variables, such as our current position in space, what direction we're traveling, and how fast we're actually going. In this study, we used new methods to investigate how single neurons in a region of the brain called medial entorhinal cortex encode these different navigational variables. So how does the brain support navigation? To think about this question, let's consider how a car navigates. In a car, you have two very important variables, a speedometer that tells you the instantaneous speed of the car, and a GPS system that tells you where you are. We can think about what the speedometer is actually doing by considering the angle of the needle. This angle increases monotonically with speed, giving you a very clean readout of how fast the car is going. At the same time, the GPS gives you a very clean readout of your XY position. But what about the brain? In this work, we find that the brain can actually operate very differently. For example, while some neurons, classically called speed cells, increase their firing rate with running speed, just like the speedometer, we find that other neurons actually decrease their firing rate with speed, and some neurons change non-monotonically with speed, so that their firing rates go up and down as the speed increases. Similarly, for cells that encode position, their firing rates can vary quite heterogeneously across space. Unlike the very regular place cells which fire at only one location, or the famous grid cells that fire periodically across position. And actually, we show that it's even more interesting than that. It turns out that the representations of position and speed are all mixed up. So for example, a single neuron, while the mouse is running slowly, might have a very fuzzy pattern of activity across space. But as the mouse speeds up, its representation of space tightens up and sharpens to give more information. So actually, the brain navigates quite differently from a car in that it mixes up speed and position and even head direction in one very complicated representation. And we'll tell you more about that next. To identify how neural activity changes with the position, head direction, and running speed, we recorded the spiking activity of single neurons along with the position, head direction, running speed of a mouse while it randomly foraged in an open environment. To uncover how neurons encode these variables, we built a statistical model that finds a relationship between navigational variables and neural spiking in an unbiased way. In essence, the model finds tuning properties of each variable that generate a spike train that is most similar to the recorded spike train. We can then use these final tuning curves to gain insight into how that cell encodes these navigational variables. By changing which variables are given to the model, we can also determine which variables are most influential for determining spiking. After learning the tuning properties of all the neurons in our data set, we then analyze the model output. While we saw many of the same tuning properties that previous labs have identified, like grid cells, border cells, classic head direction cells, and speed cells, we also saw cells with unconventional tuning curves. In addition, while many previous labs have reported that cells in superficial entorhinal cortex only encode a single variable, we observed that many cells, in fact, encoded multiple variables simultaneously. Finally, we observed that the position and head direction codes change with the animal's running speed. In particular, the position and directional codes become sharper with faster running speeds. This is a really interesting finding because it suggests that the neural codes in entorhinal cortex are not static, but in fact, they can flexibly change with the animal's behavior. Taken together, our results have some important implications for how we think about entorhinal function. People have been drawn to entorhinal cortex in part because of the strikingly symmetric spatial patterns that you find there, like those of grid cells. But we find that there's actually a large degree of diversity in terms of entorhinal representations, and that these diverse entorhinal codes actually provide really important information about navigation. In addition, these representations aren't static, they're actually flexible and can rapidly adapt to changing behavioral demands. Many of the computational models that exist today make assumptions that really just aren't consistent with these results. And so we think we may have to take a step back and think a little bit more about what mechanisms might be generating entorhinal representations. More generally, the way this story unfolded in entorhinal cortex could be emblematic of a diversity of computations across the brain. Indeed, ironically, the variables that the brain cares about could be very different from the variables that the mind cares about. There could be a huge discrepancy between those two. And if that's the case, 
then we somehow need to break free of the prejudices of our mind in order to properly understand the brain.